Fox's Book of Martyrs. Chapter 1. History of Christian Martyrs to the First General Persecutions. Under Nero. Christ our Saviour, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, hearing the confession of Simon Peter, who, first of all other, openly acknowledged him to be the Son of God, and perceiving the secret hand of his Father therein, called him, alluding to his name, a rock, upon which rock he would build his church so strong that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. In which words three things are to be noted, first, that Christ will have a church in this world. Secondly, that the same church should mightily be impugned, not only by the world, but also by the uttermost strength and powers of all hell. And, thirdly, that the same church, notwithstanding the uttermost of the devil and all his malice, should continue. Which prophecy of Christ we see wonderfully to be verified, insomuch that the whole course of the church to this day may seem nothing else but a verifying of the said prophecy. First, that Christ hath set up a church, needeth no declaration. Secondly, what force of princes, kings, monarchs, governors, and rulers of this world, with their subjects, publicly and privately, with all their strength and cunning, have bent themselves against this church. And, thirdly, how the said church, all this notwithstanding, hath yet endured and holden its own. What storms and tempests it hath overpassed, wondrous it is to behold, for the more evident declaration whereof, I have addressed this present history, to the end, first, that the wonderful works of God in his church might appear to his glory, also that, the continuance and proceedings of the church, from time to time, being set forth, more knowledge and experience may redound thereby, to the profit of the reader and edification of Christian faith. As it is not our business to enlarge upon our Saviour's history, either before or after his crucifixion, we shall only find it necessary to remind our readers of the discomfiture of the Jews by his subsequent resurrection. Although one apostle had betrayed him, although another had denied him, under the solemn sanction of an oath, and although the rest had forsaken him, unless we may accept the disciple who was known unto the high priest, the history of his resurrection gave a new direction to all their hearts, and, after the mission of the Holy Spirit, imparted new confidence to their minds. The powers with which they were endued emboldened them to proclaim his name, to the confusion of the Jewish rulers, and the astonishment of Gentile proselytes. I Saint Stephen Saint Stephen suffered the next in order. His death was occasioned by the faithful manner in which he preached the gospel to the betrayers and murderers of Christ. To such a degree of madness were they excited, that they cast him out of the city and stoned him to death. The time when he suffered is generally supposed to have been at the Passover which succeeded to that of our Lord's crucifixion, and to the era of his ascension, in the following spring. Upon this a great persecution was raised against all who professed their belief in Christ as the Messiah, or as a prophet. We are immediately told by Saint Luke, that there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and that they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. About two thousand Christians, with Nicanor, one of the seven deacons, suffered martyrdom during the persecution that arose about Stephen. 2. James the Great. The next martyr we meet with, according to Saint Luke, in the history of the Apostles Acts, was James the son of Zebedee, the elder brother of John, and a relative of our Lord, for his mother Salome was cousin German to the Virgin Mary. It was not until ten years after the death of Stephen that the second martyrdom took place, for no sooner had Herod Agrippa been appointed governor of Judea, than, with a view to ingratiate himself with them, he raised a sharp persecution against the Christians, and determined to make an effectual blow, by striking at their leaders. The account given us by an eminent primitive writer, Clemens Alexandrinus, ought not to be overlooked, that, as James was led to the place of martyrdom, his accuser was brought to repent of his conduct by the apostles' extraordinary courage and undauntedness, and fell down at his feet to request his pardon professing himself a Christian, and resolving that James should not receive the crown of martyrdom alone. Hence they were both beheaded at the same time. 
Thus did the first apostolic martyr cheerfully and resolutely receive that cup, which he had told our Saviour he was ready to drink. Timon and Parmenas suffered martyrdom about the same time, the one at Philippi, and the other in Macedonia. These events took place AD 44. 3. Philip was born at Bethsaida, in Galilee and was first called by the name of disciple. He labored diligently in Upper Asia, and suffered martyrdom at Heliopolis, in Phrygia. He was scourged, thrown into prison, and afterwards crucified, A.D. 54. 4. Matthew, whose occupation was that of a toll-gatherer, was born at Nazareth. He wrote his gospel in Hebrew which was afterwards translated into Greek by James the Less. The scene of his labors was Parthia, and Ethiopia, in which latter country he suffered martyrdom, being slain with a halberd in the city of Nadaba, A.D. 60. V. James the Less is supposed by some to have been the brother of our Lord, by a former wife of Joseph. This is very doubtful, and accords too much with the Catholic superstition that Mary never had any other children except our Saviour. He was elected to the oversight of the churches of Jerusalem, and was the author of the epistle ascribed to James in the sacred canon. At the age of ninety-four he was beat and stoned by the Jews, and finally had his brains dashed out with a fuller's club. Vi. Matthias, of whom less is known than of most of the other disciples, was elected to fill the vacant place of Judas. He was stoned at Jerusalem and then beheaded. 7. Andrew was the brother of Peter. He preached the gospel to many Asiatic nations, but on his arrival at Edessa he was taken and crucified on a cross, the two ends of which were fixed transversely in the ground. Hence the derivation of the term, St. Andrew's Cross. 8. St. Mark was born of Jewish parents of the tribe of Levi. He is supposed to have been converted to Christianity by Peter, whom he served as an amanuensis, and under whose inspection he wrote his gospel in the Greek language. Mark was dragged to pieces by the people of Alexandria, at the great solemnity of Serapis their idol, ending his life under their merciless hands. 9. Peter Among many other saints, the blessed apostle Peter was condemned to death, and crucified, as some do write, at Rome albeit some others, and not without cause, do doubt thereof. Hegesippus saith that Nero sought matter against Peter to put him to death, which, when the people perceived, they entreated Peter with much ado that he would fly the city. Peter, through their importunity at length persuaded, prepared himself to avoid. But, coming to the gate, he saw the Lord Christ come to meet him, to whom he, worshipping, said, Lord, whither dost thou go? to whom he answered and said, I am come again to be crucified. By this, Peter, perceiving his suffering to be understood, returned into the city. Jerome saith that he was crucified, his head being down and his feet upward, himself so requiring, because he was he said, unworthy to be crucified after the same form and manner as the Lord was. Ex Paul Paul, the Apostle, who before was called Saul after his great travail and unspeakable labors in promoting the gospel of Christ, suffered also in this first persecution under Nero. Abdias, declareth that under his execution Nero sent two of his esquires, Phyriga and Parthamias, to bring him word of his death. They, coming to Paul instructing the people, desired him to pray for them, that they might believe, who told them that shortly after they should believe and be baptized at his sepulchre. This done, the soldiers came and led him out of the city to the place of execution, where he, after his prayers made, gave his neck to the sword. 11. Jude. The brother of James, was commonly called Thaddeus. He was crucified at Edessa, A.D. 72. 12. Bartholomew. Preached in several countries, and having translated the Gospel of Matthew into the language of India, he propagated it in that country. He was at length cruelly beaten and then crucified by the impatient idolaters. 13. Thomas. Called Didymus, preached the gospel in Parthia and India, where exciting the rage of the pagan priests, he was martyred by being thrust through with a spear. 14. 
Luke. The Evangelist, was the author of the Gospel which goes under his name. He travelled with Paul through various countries, and is supposed to have been hanged on an olive tree, by the idolatrous priests of Greece. 15. Simon. Surnamed Zealots, preached the Gospel in Mauritania, Africa, and even in Britain, in which latter country he was crucified, A.D. 74. 16. John. The beloved disciple, was brother to James the Great. The churches of Smyrna, Pergamos, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, and Thyatira, were founded by him. From Ephesus he was ordered to be sent to Rome, where it is affirmed he was cast into a cauldron of boiling oil. He escaped by miracle, without injury. Domitian afterwards banished him to the Isle of Patmos, where he wrote the Book of Revelation. Nerva, the successor of Domitian, recalled him. He was the only apostle who escaped a violent death. 17. Barnabas Was of Cyprus, but of Jewish descent, his death is supposed to have taken place about A.D. 73. And yet, notwithstanding all these continual persecutions and horrible punishments, the church daily increased, deeply rooted in the doctrine of the apostles and of men apostolical, and watered plentifully with the blood of saints. Next, Chapter 2